Good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Jesus here at Abundant Life Homestead, where every day we take one more step down the path of Connections Bible Study. The Connections Bible Study is based on the Revised Common Lectionary that is studied by millions of Christians around the world. And today's reading is the Old Testament. Yes, because it's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. <laughs> So today we are reading Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 through 19a. I can tell you when I read, I'm just going to read all of 19 because that last little bit is nothing. Just letting you know. And while, we're, while we read and study, we tend to just write down things that jump out at us. Um, just tell how how the verse hits us we don't uh, don't necessarily have to get into a deep theological discussion about it <clears throat> and we ask that you do the same thing and if you wish go ahead and put your thoughts and feelings about today's verses in the comments and also read each other's comments that just helps all of us we'll read your comments as well helps everybody get a better grasp of the verses we're studying today correct yes all right And while you're at it, if you have any prayer requests you'd like to put forth into the comments, let us know, and they will not be ignored. So, leading into today's verses, what version are you going to read? I'm reading the New Living Translation. Okay, if you're doing that, I'll probably, I'll, I'll read the Amplified. So, leading up to today's verse, Jacob... And Rebecca had just went through the deception of Isaac that gave Jacob the uh, first firstborn's blessing. Um, this is something to note that it's completely different from the birthright that we talked about last week. Um, I don't know all the, the intricacies and rituals to birthright versus firstborn blessing, but even Esau makes the, uh, makes the distinction between the two, saying, My brother deceived me twice. First he took my birthright, then he took my blessing. What this, do, what this did was fulfill God's two-part promise to Rebekah concerning her children. When Jacob got the birthright, he became stronger. Um, he was the spiritual leader of the family. He was the pillar of the family. And then when Jacob gets the blessing, that fulfills God prom God's promise that the older son will serve the younger. Isaac made it clear in both Jacob's blessing and Esau's prophecy. Some, some write that it was an impromptu blessing or whatever, but it, it was really a prophecy to, to Esau. He makes it clear in both of those that not only Esau, but all of the brothers and sisters were to serve Jacob. So immediately after that, Isaac passes on God's covenant to Jacob, the same as God gave to Abraham. Abraham passed it on to Isaac. Isaac passed it on to Jacob. And immediately after, he gives him the same instructions for finding a wife. Um, not quite as detailed as, as last week, but it was still, she cannot be a Canaanite, and you need to go to the homeland, basically go to your mother's brother's house, and take a daughter from there to be your wife. And that leads us up to today's scripture, where Jacob is traveling seemingly alone, on his way back to Abraham's homeland to find a wife. And that's where we begin. Would you like to read first? So I can drink coffee? It was a lot. I told you I wanted to talk a lot about the verse leading up to it. Did you not believe me? So, um, 28, starting at verse 10. Meanwhile, Jacob left Beersheba and traveled toward Haran. At sundown, he arrived at a good place to set up camp and stop there for the night. Jacob found a stone to rest his head against and lay down to sleep. As he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven, and he saw the angels of God going up and down the stairway. 
At the top of the stairway stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham, and the God of your father Isaac. The ground you are lying on belongs to you. I am giving it to you and your descendants. Your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all directions, to the west and the east, to the north and the south. And all the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. What's more, I am with you and I will protect you wherever you go. One day I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised you. Then <coughs> Jesus, then Jacob, <laughs> wrong testament there. Mm -hmm. Then Jacob <laughs> awoke from his sleep and said, "Surely the Lord is in this place, and I wasn't even aware of it." But he was also afraid and said, "What an awesome place this is! It is none other than the house of God, the very gateway to heaven." The next morning, Jacob got up very early. He took the stone he had rested his head against and set it upright as a memorial pillar. Then he poured olive oil over it. And he named that place Bethel, which means house of God. Okay. Well, I don't think it's incredibly different in the Amplified. There's a, there's a little, little bit of extra in it today. But uh, this is one that didn't seem a whole lot of different in any of the translations. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, I'm very itchy this morning. Now Jacob, and this is amplified, yeah. Verse 10. Now Jacob left Beersheba, never to see his mother again, and he traveled toward Haran. And he came to a certain place and stayed overnight there because the sun had set. Taking one of the, stone, the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down there to sleep. He dreamed that there was a ladder or a stairway placed on the earth, and the top of it reached out of sight toward heaven. And he saw the angels of God ascending and descending on it, going to and from heaven. And behold, the Lord stood above and around him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father's father, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land of promise on which you are lying. Your descendants shall be as countless as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families and nations of earth shall be blessed through you and your descendants. Behold, I am with you and will keep careful watch in, over you and guard you wherever you may go, and I will bring you back to this promised land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep, and he said, Without any doubt, the Lord is in this place, and I did not realize it. So he was afraid and said, How fearful and awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gateway to heaven. So Jacob got up early in the morning, and he took the stone he had put under his head, and he set it up as a pillar that is a monument to the vision in his dream, and he poured olive oil on the top of it to consecrate it. He named that place Bethel, the house of God. The previous name of that city was Luz, or the almond tree. That was part B of verse 19. <laughs> so, what did you come up with today, honey? Um, the first thing that was significant to me was that God comes to Jacob um, in a dream. And that's happens so often in the Old Testament and every time that happens it's something significant. It's never anything small. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing. Do you want to go <clears throat> Yeah, if you need to study your own. Notes. No, I know. I just didn't. <laughs> my next one's like really long. That's why. So is mine. That's right. The ladder or the stairway to heaven, it, God uses to show Jacob that he is a God who concerned with, who is concerned with and interacts with his people on earth and also gives us access to heaven. I did a little cross-referencing here, and later on in John, Jesus says, you know, he tells us that he is the ladder. It's John chapter 1, verse 51 Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say unto you, hereafter you, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. 
I don't normally include a cross-reference in this, but it was so blatant, Jesus saying, hey, mm -hmm. look, I am that, I am Jacob's ladder. I am the stairway to heaven. But not the song. But not the song. <laughs> <laughs> or the toy. You ever have a Jacob's ladder toy? I, I didn't have one, but... Yeah. Never ends. You just keep flipping yeah. the top one over. Um... God promises Jacob he will protect him and his his numerous descendants, but he doesn't promise that the path will be easy. And um, you're right, he doesn't. And the connection with today to make this verse relevant, not that we need lots of reasons, but the big one I get is that life is always isn't always smooth and easy, but God is always with us. And he promises never to leave us or forsake us. And that's what I was thinking when I was reading about him promising Jacob. He always leaves out. It'll be smooth sailing. Nothing will ever go wrong. <laughs> yeah, he's never, he's never going to tell you that. It ain't going to be smooth sailing until you get to heaven. So in, in this, God repeats... The covenant that he passes on to Jacob, which he had given to Abraham. Abraham gave it to Isaac. I don't recall, does God ever specifically repeat the covenant to Isaac? I don't know. But I, anyway, Isaac passes the covenant with God on to Jacob. And now in this dream, God passes it on. God passes it on to Jacob. And it... it it seems like that wasn't enough because Jacob had already heard this and surely he knew that God had, had given Abraham and Abraham had given Isaac and he probably heard this story a thousand times. So God ends it with saying, I am with you, I will keep you, I will not leave you, basically. And Jacob's excitement as what the Lord has just told him and the, the, this end of it, it shows that this is a great... this. I, will, I am with you, I will keep you, I'm not going to leave you. This is a greater blessing than Isaac or any earthly father, grandfather, family name could ever give. Mm -hmm. Just just having that, it, it doesn't matter what else you have or what else you could get or what you're about to go through. I am with you, I will keep you, I will not leave you. It, it was in, until the work is done, basically. And, and there's a, another cross reference with that. Is, that. is it Philippians? He who has done a good work shall perform it. Or he who has begun a good work, work. in you shall mm -hmm. perform of it until the day of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, once he says, hey, this is what we're going to do, he sticks with it. He doesn't leave the job undone. Mm -hmm. and, and that... Yeah, that's a greater blessing than any blessing you could get on earth. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the last thing I have is the memorial pillar. Mm -hmm. And what did they call it in your... <clears throat> uh, so An he altar. Made a, uh, he made a pillar to consecrate. Let's see. Um, he took the stone he put under his head, set it up as a pillar that is a monument to okay. the vision of his dream. He, bought, he poured olive oil on top of it to consecrate it. Um, a memorial, a monument, all of these are to remember. And um, that's something I was thinking about uh, while reading this is uh, what do we do for our reminders of our encounters with God? And it doesn't have to be the same for everyone, but I mean, there's people aren't going around building altars out of rocks because we don't use rocks for pillows. Generally, um, <laughs> but uh, but we do need our reminders. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be anything big. I mean, there's little things. Um, what do you have that reminds you? What do I have that reminds me? I don't know. Really, just my Bibles. You know. Mine are our babies. Huh? Mine are our babies. Our babies. Yeah. Is that was a big promise that God made. Yeah. There's one sitting over here. He's doing really good trying <laughs> not to be make noise. He's trying. 
So, any, anything else you get out of this? I, I've got one more point, but I have no idea where to take it because I don't really want to speculate. It's kind of surprising with his upbringing and the family of Abraham and Isaac that Jacob, he said, surely or without any doubt, the Lord is in this place and I did not realize it. How did he not know God was always with him? God is always with us. Well, He's in is... every place, omnipresent. Yeah, that's what I... I yeah, this is one I of have the to few think times... back of the order of when God reveals, but... but he's, this is like one of the few times that he's left his father. Yeah. And his father has always been the one teaching him and showing him about God. So he thinks he leaves his father, God's going to still be with his father and maybe not over here. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, he, he doesn't realize that God is omnipresent. And that's, I think that's kind of where the dream comes in. God saying, no, no, I'm with you too. I'm not just with your father and your yeah. father's father. But I'm with you and I'll be with your descendants as well. Okay. There's my speculation. I'll take it. <laughs> not saying that I'm right. No, I'm right. It's wrong, but. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not I'm not saying either way no actually I am I'm saying you're right I, I just won't say you're wrong mm -mm. <laughs> I love you I love you so you have any uh, any other notes or any rabbit holes you want to jump down although I think that I jumped down a little one time so. I jumped through so many rabbit holes yesterday I'm trying yeah. to yeah skirt past them today okay. there, there's, but, uh, yeah there, there's some big rabbit holes i could have yeah, jumped down yeah, on this but yeah, i absolutely. don't like i said i don't want to get into that deep theological mm -hmm. deep scholarly discussion of this especially with last week you know the word is the light unto my feet the lamp unto my path mm -hmm. it is clear and easy to understand right. you want to get into the deep theological stuff we can do that in, not on here. <laughs> yeah, in a different setting, or you can go go to college just to be a theologian and Bible scholar. But I'm working on it. Right here, we're trying to <laughs> trying to keep it a little easier. Yeah, but um, I I keep going back to the dream, and <clears throat> we've got Jacob here, and, and I, it's I, hard not to look forward. But Joseph with his dreams and and that that's an interesting thing where you point out that you know people are going to read this different and it's going to hit them different you know that's one way where we're very different i i don't dream mm, yeah. I, I i've had maybe you five do. dreams well okay i've remembered maybe <laughs> five dreams in my entire life so when i read about somebody's dream it doesn't it doesn't strike me the dream part mm -hmm. doesn't really touch me but you vivid dreamer yeah <laughs> you see dream and you're like oh got my attention mm -hmm. because i know all about that well that and like i said joseph that's my favorite bible story i mean i thought roman day bible story okay so chapter, romans 8 is my story. favorite chapter okay joseph is my favorite story <laughs> okay but, you know the bible is my favorite so i have to break it up into little things <laughs> okay but there's something about the story of joseph yeah so be prepared when we come to the story of Joseph. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, once again, it's just the dreams. Um, and uh, I think God speaks to us a lot in our dreams, even today. And I know that's hard for you because you don't dream. But <sighs> yeah. Okay. We should probably stop there. Yeah, it's good enough. So, that's, oh, so, any prayer requests you have, and leave if them in the comments. And you're, you're watching this on demand, you know, you, even long after, if you have any more comments you'd like to add, or your own insight on the scripture, go ahead and throw it in, as well as, that's what I was you were going for prayer requests, I was going to let you take back over. Oh. I said prayer requests already, but um, 
And uh, we do have an email address. If you don't want to put your prayer requests in the comments, you don't want them to be public. Um, or if you want to tell us something that you don't want to be public, ministry.alh at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And we will get your message and respond to you. But now, we'll pray. Okay. And then we'll move on. Father, we thank you for your word and your thoughts and the fact that you know what we need when we need it. You come to us in our dreams and you give us these stories to help us guide our path. And we know that you are with us always and you give us the strength to get through whatever we're going through and you've promised to never leave us. The past won't always be easy, but we know that you're always there. So we ask that you continue being with the children at camp and touch them in a very real way and be with everyone that is watching this video or listening or just even surrounding us. Bless them and help us to be a light into this world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, we uh, thank you for joining us this morning. <laughs> I've it's, got two songs. <laughs> it's, it's this one. <clears throat> we, we will be back bright and early tomorrow morning. It will be Thursday, July the 20th. And we will be reading Psalm 139, verses 1 through 12, and 23 and 24. So, looking forward to that. I have not read it and studied it yet i might do it right before the video we'll see what happens <laughs> <laughs> so appreciate you joining us we hope to see you tomorrow and every day thereafter and from us at abundant life homestead and one very sleepy baby we hope you have a blessed day thank you we love you